Hi everyone, welcome to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert, and today is day 24 of March Malt Madness. This is the final matchup in the round of 16. So after tonight's matchup, we'll be down to the quarterfinals. Eight, eight whiskeys remain. Uh, tonight's matchup is an unusual one, and it's a contrast in styles. We have the Bunahaven 12-year-old, which is an Isla whiskey, but it's not peated which is unusual for Isla whiskeys. And then we have the Ben Rioc, the Smoky 10, which is a Speyside whiskey, which are usually sweet and um, fruity and vanilla and things like that. But as you can tell from the title, this one is peated. It's actually a, a combination of both peated and unpeated. Um, but so we have a peated versus an unpeated, but they're from the opposite regions you might expect if you're familiar with the different regions of, of Scottish whiskey. Um, the Bunahaven 12 year old is bottled at 46%. In fact, they're both bottled at 46%. And this is a combination of ex bourbon and ex sherry casks. As you can see, it's a little bit darker than the space side. That's from that, uh, sherry influence and also an extra couple of years in in casks and the things you would normally get on uh, a combination bourbon and sherry are things like dried fruit nuts in this case because of the isla location a little hint of sea salt that rich sherry sweetness some people even get uh, dark chocolate and just a touch of spice i i often get a touch of spice from a sherry finish now the ben Rioc, the smoky 10 as I mentioned, it's a combination of unpeated and peated whiskey. It's a three cask maturation. Some goes into ex bourbon barrels, some goes into ex Jamaican rum barrels, and some goes into toasted virgin oak brand new barrels, which gives a little bit more of a sharp influence, wood influence than a refilled barrel like a lot of scotches are put into. So three casks on this one. And so, the things that you're likely to find in this one are things like smoked oak, orchard fruit, honey, uh, some smoked malt, vanilla, a little hint of citrus zest. And then on the aftertaste, it's been described often as campfire smoke, sweet oak, and a little touch of spice. So two extremely different styles coming from the opposite regions that you would expect. Let's start with the uh, Bunahaven. Definitely the, the deep, rich, dark fruits. I'm not really getting the sea salt yet. From what I remember from the last time I tasted it, I got that more in the taste than in the aromas. But that sherry influence is definitely present. Very nice. Right from the very start of the first sip is an explosion of fruit flavors on the front of my tongue and then rolling over the middle of my tongue. And then as it spreads out a little bit to the sides, I get a little bit of a spiciness. I'm not sure if I get nuts. A lot of people get a taste of nuts in several different bourbons and also on sherried whiskeys. And I don't tend to, to notice that, so maybe that's just a taste that I'm not particularly well attuned to. But I'm, I'm definitely getting the sherry influence. Maybe a little bit of that, the sea salt on the end of it, kind of in the, in the finish of the, the sip. That's so good. I might have to come back to this later tonight. Okay, now let's go for the peated one. This is the first Benrioc product I've ever tasted. I'd never had it in a restaurant or a bar, but I'd heard about it a lot, and I picked up the Smoky 10 um, because of my 
enjoyment of peat, I thought a space side that's peated, I have to see what that's all about. And obviously it's done pretty well. It's still in the tournament. Mm. Heavy smoke, the aromas. First thing you smell is the smoke. And then once you get past that first blast <laughs> of smoke hitting you in the face, then I start to get some of the other flavors, the fruits and the, the citrus. I don't drink very much rum, and so I don't know. I've had a couple of whiskeys in this tournament that uh, were partially matured in rum casks, and they definitely add more of a tropical fruit flavor to the, to the whiskeys, but I'm not sure I could pick out what was from the rum, what's from the virgin oak, the new oak, what's from the ex-bourbon. There's several different influences going on here, and it is complicated. It's dominated by the peat up front. And then slowly you start to get some of the fruitiness and the bourbon maturation influence and the rum influence. But it's, it's having to fight through that layer of peat uh, a lot more than I expected it to, to have to do. The second sip is much more about the fruit influences, the bourbon cask, the vanillas, the honeys, but that there's just no, there's just no denying that layer of peat is ever present on this one. I have to look for some more Benriot products that are not necessarily peated to see what their unpeated whiskeys are like. So I like what they've done here. It's, it's interesting to throw P into a space side and three different casks. That's that's pushing the envelope a little bit. Getting a little bit of a Jamaican hug too. It's a it's playing on my acid reflux a little bit. But it's nice, it's good. Will I be able to taste? the Bunahaven after the, after the peat of the Ben Riach. Mm -hmm. And that aroma gets even better. You'll see me swirling a lot. And there's two different schools of thought on that. A lot of people like to swirl the glass to, to get some of the whiskey across more of the glass surface so that when you stick your nose in it, you get more of the aromas and not just a hit of the alcohol. I've seen some people, and I've done it a couple of times when I've spilled when I'm pouring, instead of you know wiping my hand off on the towel or licking it, um, is I'll, I'll rub my hands really vigorously to, uh, to rub off the alcohol and what's left are the oils of the whiskey and you get more of the scents of the whiskey, the, the aromas of the whiskey that way. It's a really interesting uh, trick somebody showed me on, on a video one time and I really like that. And so that's what they're doing when they're swirling on the, in a glass is they're, they're not necessarily trying to aerate the whiskey. They're just trying to get it spread around the glass as much as they can because these tulip shaped Glencairn glasses concentrate the aromas towards the top anyway. And so if you can get more glass cover, you get a little bit better sense of the aroma. If you're drinking out of a, I, I did this the other night. I wasn't with a whiskey that I, I didn't know. It was one I knew really well. And so I just grabbed a tumbler and drank out of that. And there's almost no aromas at all because that the wide opening at the top, they just dissipate so quickly. It doesn't affect the taste any, but it definitely affects your, your ability to get to the aromas. So these Glen Cairns are really nice for that. They have a nice heavy base. Um, and so they're, they're, they're comfortable. They make smaller ones too for tastings. If you're just doing tastings like this, I could use the smaller ones. I don't happen to own any of them. Excuse me. Um, and there's also another glass company. I'm not sponsored by either glass company, so don't get any ideas, but I tried some from an American company called Aged and Ore. They have what they call a neat glass, which is a little squattier than this, 
but still has the tulip shape, the wide bottom, and the, the more uh, enclosed top level. But it's really comfortable in my hand. I really like that one. But they also have a, a tasting set that has four glasses that on the base are etched the letters A, B, C, and D. And then they have these little rubber gaskets that you can put over the bottles, A, B, C, or D. But when you're not actually using them, you put them on the bottom of the glass and it holds it into the metal tray. So you could turn them upside down, hang them from the wall. They're really kind of cool. Um, I've used those a couple of times and they're a little bit smaller size. They're just perfect for, for flight tastings. I'm stalling because I want to go back to the Bunahaven. Okay, I have a decision, I think. Yes, the Buna Haven is going on into the corner, quarterfinals and I'm gonna eliminate the Benriac here. Although, like I said, this is very good. I'm, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this bottle and then probably look for a replacement from one of their other core bottlings. But the Bunahaven will, will advance. This is my second or third tasting out of this bottle, and I think I've liked it more each time. I wasn't a real fan of this the first time I tried it, but it was before I really knew what different influences were, and my palate has changed over time, and so right now I'm a big fan. Okay, so that's day 24. That's the end of the octofinals, or the round of 16. Now we go into the quarterfinals and the first matchup in the quarterfinals tomorrow for day 25 is a banger. They all are going to be at this point. There's only eight whiskeys left. It's the Springbank 10 year old from Campbelltown and the Lafroy quarter cask that I just had last night is from Isla. So a Springbank against a Lafroy in the first round of the quarterfinals. At this point, we only have another week to go, seven more eliminations, and then we'll have a winner. If you've been with me on this whole journey, bless you. Um, to be honest, I wasn't sure I was actually gonna make it through 31 videos, and I'm not there yet. I still have seven more to go, but now that I've made it through 24, I'm feeling fairly confident I can, I can go through the last seven without too many problems. But leave me comments below what you liked, what you didn't like about this matchup, if you've had either or both of these or any of the other whiskeys involved, or even if you want to make predictions for who you think is going to win, given my tastes over the last 24 days. And I will see you all tomorrow for the first matchup of the quarterfinals. Bye, everybody.